Hey everyone, it's Ollie here from One Number. And today I just want to talk you through how to build a simple, effective, and good looking KPI for your Tableau dashboards. I'm actually hoping that this is the first of a couple of videos on building KPIs, mostly because I know that building a good KPI is a skill, maybe it's an art, and there are different ways to display this kind of information. And it feels like each KPI that you want to build, the different chart types that you want to use, come with their own little set of tips and tricks and skills to making that one happen. So if you've got any particular KPIs that you want to see and you want us to build, drop that down in the comments below and we'll update this as we go. But the one that I want to build today looks like this. It's very simple. It's our, uh, you know, a little measure tile. So we've got sales and the year to date sales. Then we've got a percentage difference versus our previous year. And then we've got a simple little line chart um, that shows our sales to date. Now to show you what this would look like on a full dashboard, it would look something like this. So you can see here's our little text. And this is a month over month comparison. Our current one over here is a week over week. So you could choose the date part that works best for you. So I think these are pretty effective when they're kind of stacked side by side. And you can see we've got sales, profit, and order count. This current one is a work in progress. So as soon as it's done, I'll upload it onto Tableau Public and share the link with you. But this is the little KPI that we're going to build today. We're just going to use Sample Superstore. So feel free to fire up your copy of Tableau, connect to Superstore, and let's build this together. Now, the first step that we need to do is create a sales field for 2024. And because I already have a 2024 sales amount, I'm just going to call it sales 2024A. And we're going to say something like, if the year of my order date equals, I'm just going to hard code 2024 in here because Sample Superstore only goes up to 2024. But if you're working with some up-to-date data, you'd say equals the year of today. That would work pretty well, but we'll go with 2024. And now how do I get, how do I make sure that this uh, stays up to date, right? Gives me my year to date sales. Well, I'm gonna say my date part, day of year of my order date field is less than or equal to my date part, day of year of today. Okay, date part, day of year. Um, ooh, then sales. Date part day of year is super useful uh, because what it does is it numbers all our days, one through 365. And we can just make sure that, hey, up until now, how many days have they been? 49 or something? You know, I'm recording this on the 18th of Feb. Uh, we're just going to get the first 49 days of this year. Now, I, I know I need to put some in here because I'm going to create some percentage differences. And in order to do that, we need to make sure that this is an aggregated amount. So I'm just going to lop some on the front. Let's hit OK. Let's drop this onto text. Very nice. Maybe what we can do actually is format this to give us a currency. And let's put that in dollars. OK, nice. Well, why don't we do the same? Let's just duplicate this and get last year's sales to date. Uh, let's see. I need to keep this. And we'll drop that to 2023. OK, fantastic. That's our sales. 20 I mean, technically, this is uh, year to date, right? And 2024, A probably should be <laughs> year to date so we can keep track of these things. Okay, very nice. Now, uh, the second thing that we're going to do is we're going to create this percentage difference field. Um, so let's call it percentage difference. And we're going to say, uh, take my current minus my previous divided by my previous and say, okay, let's drop that onto text. And let's change this format again to percentage. Maybe just one decimal point is fine. OK, so that's looking pretty good. But the one thing that I definitely want to point out is that at this point, you see how we've got that color change. We've got the arrow. Now, that's not just one clever field you know, that sits on our color tab or something like that. 
what we're actually going to do is we're going to get Tableau to output our percentage, the same field, the same percentage change, whether it's positive or negative. And I'll show you how that's going to work. So we're going to say this is our percentage difference is greater than zero. And we're going to say, okay, if my, let's find this, percentage difference is greater than, uh, do we want equal to? Sure. Greater than or equal to zero, then show me my percentage difference end. So, okay, so we're just outputting the same field, right? Our percentage difference if it's greater than zero. So bear with me, I'll show you my logic now. Let's duplicate this, let's edit it. And I'm gonna make this less than, let's make it less than. Okay, so that's the only difference so far. Now, these little guys are gonna go onto our text in place of the percentage that we just created. Okay, and it looks something like this. Hmm, maybe let's change this formatting to percentage again, just so we can keep track of those. Okay, fine. Now, do you see how there's this little blank space in between the two? So basically what we've programmed Tableau to do is to say, if it's greater than zero, return the percentage. If it's less than zero, don't return the percentage, right? So <laughs> we've got these two fields that are kind of doing the same thing, but we're only gonna get one output at a time. Now, where that's cool is if we edit the text here, uh, we're gonna insert both of these greater thans and less thans. Um, hmm. Let's all put this in the right order. So I definitely want that sales amount at the top. And then I'm gonna insert our two percentage differences like this, okay, next to each other. And here, I guess we can start doing some of our color formatting. So for my greater than zeros, I'm gonna choose some cool <laughs> green, really obnoxious green. And for this less than zero, I'm gonna choose a red or a pink or something, okay? So that those will be outputted. Um, then I think the other thing is we could start working on this formatting a little bit. So maybe we can make this 11 or 12 point. This one I'm gonna make, this is the actual sales amount. I'm gonna make it really big. And these two, I'll make it 12. Let's maybe make this bold. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, something like that looks nice. Um, okay, so I think we're kind of there a lot of what we're gonna be doing today is formatting actually, you know, more than anything else. So we're just trying to get this to look nice. Now, we also have this little arrow that changes based on whether the uh, output is positive or negative. So that's gonna be a second calculation on top of what we've already built. So what I'm gonna do is find these two calculations and duplicate these and edit them, okay. So this is my, I'm just going to rename this arrow. And instead of outputting this percentage difference, I'm literally going to output a little emoji arrow. So if you don't have access to emojis quickly on your keyboard or something, you can just go and copy one, you know, literally just right click and copy it. But for this one, uh, I'm going to say, okay, the percentage difference is less than zero. So let's go and find a down arrow and input that. Tableau is perfectly happy with this. This is fine. Um, I think this is our arrow. So let's make that nice and clear. And let's clear this out and do this again. For those of you who are on a Mac and wondering how I've gotten these emojis so quickly, I'm just using Raycast, which is a pretty cool app. Okay, so I'll drop those in. And now these two, again, I'm just gonna click and drag and drop them onto text. And we're gonna input them before each of our percentage calculations. So um, this is the less than zero, so let's drop it in here. And this is the greater than zero, so let's drop it in there. And now let's try and get this formatting the same. So I'm gonna click 12, I'm pretty sure these were 12s. And let's make it bold. And now uh, I'm going to need to input a little space there, but I'm going to show you why in just a few seconds. Let's do the same thing here and apply that. Okay, so that looks pretty nice. There's a little arrow. 
and let's just drop a space in between the two. I, I just think it's nice to have a little buffer in between those two fields. You can literally just manually input a space. Okay, yeah, cool. So, so far, so good, I think. That's our little text input. So we've done this part of the build so far. So let's go on and do this little line chart. Now for the line chart, you do need to use your discretion a little bit, right? So we're so far, I mean, we're so close to the beginning of the year that if we wanted to do a whole year to date just using week numbers, we totally could. If you're towards the end of the year and you're doing a year to date, maybe you wanna use months, just tweak it as you go. But here is how I would set this up so far, okay? So I think what I'm gonna do is something like this. Um, if we choose our order date, drop this on here, let's go for weeks. Hmm. Let's go for week of order date, this one. Let's make it continuous. And I'm gonna drop our, uh, what are we gonna do? sales 2024 year to date like this. And then I'm just gonna make a dual axis of our 2023 year to date. Let's just do this and make a dual axis. Okay, so this is far from good looking at this point. Let's just make sure that these are synchronized. So I'm gonna right click and synchronize that axis and um, let's hide everything. So this is really, a personal read, okay? But I like minimalist KPIs and I find myself just spending a lot of time like hiding grid lines and zero lines and things like that. So I'll definitely spend time doing that as we go through it. But hey, you choose something that looks nice to you, work it out and uh, experiment a little bit and you'll see, you know, what, what you prefer. So let's move these so I don't need any row dividers or headers. Okay, that's fine, and no column dividers. Is there anything left? I think we've just got a white screen now. Okay, that looks fine. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the year that we're tracking and make that my line chart. I'm gonna bump up the size a little bit. Okay, something like this maybe. And I'm, then I'm gonna take the year that we're comparing it to, and I'm gonna make this our area chart, like that. Okay. Now, I like choosing the same colors for these. So um, let's see, what should we choose? Let's choose something from Tableau 20. Okay, and let's maybe choose a nice light blue like this and choose the same color and apply. And of course you can just choose whatever color you like and then I'll just drop this like that. So it's just, it's just a comparison really. Okay, now one thing you might run into, an issue you might run into is if the marks are the wrong way around. So let me show you what I mean. It, you've got the option to right click and move the marks to the front on a particular axis, right? Or move the marks to the back. So based off of that, if you've got your comparison year marks on the front versus the marks you're tracking on the front, you might wanna move those to the back. So that's how you do it. You'd right click on your measure, you'd show the header, and then you'd right click over here and uncheck show header, right? Something like that, uh, move marks to back, move marks to front. I guess the one other thing that is kind of annoying is you'll see over here, we've got this little gap. Um, so currently we've got a continuous weeks of order date. What we could do is filter this to say, yeah, I want, I want months. Uh, let me show you this filter. I want my months, so I wanna see all the months as long as they're the same as today. But I wanna make sure you're only showing me the weeks or the days of year up until today. Does that make sense? So show me all the months so far that we've had up until today and only show me the days of year that we've had up until today. So let's click okay, drop this in and click true. Okay, so that's just our little safety and that should be fine. So we've got our two little sheets Let's see if we can put these together. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is I guess a little acknowledgement here. We don't have a lot of space to work with. Uh, well, I mean, we've got too much space to work with, right? We've only got one little KPI card, but your best friend are gonna be your containers trying to get these to fit just right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is drop in a vertical container and I'm gonna put in the line chart. 
I'm going to take out our um, measure names. I'm going to hide our titles just so it's nice and clear and we've got an entire view. Okay, perfect. Then I'm going to drop in a horizontal container right at the top of this KPI card and drop in the actual KPI uh, you know, indicator that we built. And then uh, I'm going to take, just for the sake of our editing here, you'll fit this in however you like. But for the sake of my editing, trying to get this as similar to what we might see in a dashboard as possible, I'm just going to drag some blank objects around here. And Tableau is fighting with me. Oh, come on. Just want to resize this. Okay, nice. Something like that. Uh, I'm going to make this entire view. Wow. The sizing is really... Hmm. Giving me some trouble. Let's drag this down a little bit. Okay, we still need a little bit more space. Anytime you see all the sort of pound signs or hashtags in one go, you need a little bit more space. I think I'm going to drop another blank object to the right of this KPI card just so that I can sort of set it up just right. You know, something like that is probably how I'd set something like this up. Now, the one good thing to know is that your text is not really going to resize. So you, you need to make sure that your charts uh, are sized appropriately. So at this point, you can see ah, my chart is too long. Um, I actually think it's a bit too high as well, but I'm in trouble because it's not in a uh, horizontal container. So I can't just drop a blank object at this point. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put a horizontal container in here. I'm going to drop this guy in here and put a blank object to the right and just shift it up a little bit, you know, something like that. So let's see what we've got so far. So here's my container. Um, hmm. Maybe, maybe I'll put this right on the outside. So, uh, just want to get this thing sized really nicely for you guys so you can see what it would look like. Where did this one go? <laughs> Disappeared off to the right. Okay, so something like that. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we could play around with the exact size, but that's kind of how I do it. I think one other thing that uh, can be quite nice when working with these little KPI cards, especially if you're trying to build some kind of, you know, minimalist aesthetic uh, kind of dashboard, is using the, the blank space to create borders around your tiles. So if I click on these guys, you know, just double clicking on the top of these tabs, you'll notice they're actually all sitting in that container. Now, what I'm going to do is set a white background for this container, but for the rest of the dashboard, I'm going to set a very, very light grayish sort of background, you know, something like this. And so I don't know how clearly you can see that, but our actual tile here, oh, wait. Yeah, our actual tile here, um, this might be even easier to just go this way is is white but the action but the sort of background color of the whole dashboard is this is this very light grayish kind of color now that's kind of the way that this this dashboard is set up so the tiles are just implied you know by the white and then you've got this very very light gray of the dashboard as we go okay now, like I said, there are so many different ways to build KPIs, and uh, I'm sure we'll cover a couple more in the future. If you have any trouble setting these up in your dashboards, drop a comment down below. We'll be sure to get back to you as soon as we can. And also, if you're looking to upskill your Tableau over the next year, why not come and take a class with us? We've got a whole range of classes from Tableau beginners all the way through to experts. And if you want to take multiple classes, we've got a training passport, which means you get access to all our classes for 50% off. If that's you or your team, we'd love to have you. Awesome. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you soon.